Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fresh Start. I hope you all have your coffee or tea or whatever you need to help you start your day. And I'm so grateful that you all chose to join us in community for a fresh start to your Sunday as well. And I'm delighted to welcome Beth Ann Fisher to be with us this morning. Beth Ann is a PhD candidate in theology and works as Emmanuel College's spiritual and community life program coordinator. I hope that's right. I got that from your bio online. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are so pleased to have you with us this morning. And my understanding is that this morning you will help us explore the topic of faith, church, and mental health. So today's liturgy also reflects that, and I've taken some Mental Health Sunday worship resources by our partners, United Church of Christ, to help ground us in this topic. I also feel the need to note uh, the community announcement that Ian Grundy is no longer working at Kingsway Lambton United. And Ian was an integral part to making our Fresh Start worship happen, especially through these last challenging years. So we thank him for his service and wish him well. As we begin our worship time, we acknowledge the land that we are worshiping on. So I invite you to ground yourself for a moment, to feel the, the floor that connects to the earth underneath you, where Kingsway Lambton United is located, Takaranto, or colonially known Toronto, means trees standing in the water in Mohawk and has been home to Indigenous peoples for centuries. The Mississaugas of the Credit River have cared for, nurtured, and stewarded this land that we now live on. We are grateful to live on this land and remorseful for the way that we and colonial ancestors have treated them in return for their hospitality. As we worship today, let us be mindful of where God is calling us into action in our lives. So I invite you to join me in our responsive call to worship. Our God is a God of power and strength. God has created each of us with tender care. Our God is a God of majesty and awe. God walks with each of us every step of the way. Our God is a God of glory and wonder. God loves each of us with tenderness and passion. Our God calls us each by name. God calls each of us to unite in worship together. Let us pray. God of love, stir in us deep compassion for people living with mental health challenges and their families. Raise our awareness of how we can create a supportive and safe spiritual community for people who feel isolated, shunned, and ashamed. Inspire us to reach out in love as a sign of your radical hospitality and grace. Encourage us to receive the gifts that are given by all. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Morning Has Broken. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, Beth, I wonder if I can throw it over to you now to share our scripture. And I'm going to spotlight you if that's okay. Here we go. So this morning, uh, our reading from scripture is in Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. This morning, I wanted to speak with us, uh, as as Elena said, about uh, mental health and theology in the ch and the church, <laughs> broadly speaking. Um, and when I was invited to come back to Fresh Start, uh, I was given a list of potential topics that the community had expressed interest in hearing about, and this is one of them. Uh, and this is this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm not a mental health professional in the sense that I'm not a psychotherapist or a counselor, but I am someone who has been in ministry and leadership contexts and interacting with mental health struggles since I was a teenager. And at the time, I didn't have a framework for making sense of that or for how to engage um, in, in, a, in a way that was grounded in my faith. And so in the 20 some years since then, this has become something that's really important to me. Uh, I've supported several loved ones through mental health diagnoses, through major depressive episodes, through psychiatric crisis. In the fall of 2018, I was diagnosed with depression and PTSD. And earlier this year in the spring of 2022, I was diagnosed with ADHD, which is a bit of a different piece, but I think one of the things that I want to kind of preface this by saying, well, preface the rest of my thoughts by saying, is that mental health in my mind and in my approach is uh, is the same as physical health. And in the same way that there are many different types of um, health conditions, some more acute than others, uh, in the same way that there's a spectrum of physical health from perhaps acute illness in the hospital, all the way up to elite athletes who have trained extensively and are in, you want to say, peak physical fitness. Um, mental health is the same way. There's a spectrum. And just because we may not be in the emergency room, that doesn't mean that we are <laughs> necessarily elite athletes in, our, in the, in the re range of what mental health looks like. And we often categorize when we talk about mental health, we think of people with diagnoses and people without diagnoses. But in the same way that we have people who may have chronic health conditions and people who don't have chronic health conditions, people without chronic health conditions still experience health struggles. And people without um, mental health diagnoses still experience mental health in a range of ways. And we still experience the struggles of what it is to be human, of making sense of life, of suffering and sorrow and grief. 
So when I when I am talking about this broadly, I want you to hear that I'm not just talking <laughs> about people in acute crisis or with specific diagnoses. Although I do have a few things to say specifically to considering caring for those folks. Um, but more broadly, that we all experience mental health just in the same way that we all experience physical health. So that's kind of my introduction or my caveat as, as we get started. And I chose this passage uh, from scripture because this is a passage that has been uh, a deep comfort to me when I have been in the midst of, um, of deep sorrow, of uh, feeling very overwhelmed, and of feeling the darkness that often accompanies um, acute mental health struggles. And in this passage, one of the things that I love is um, it doesn't say that we aren't going to experience problems or struggles. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. And so for me, the first thing that I find comfort in here is it normalizes that like you are going to have floods and you are going to be in the midst of fires. And I think often we get very taken aback when these things happen, either in our own lives or the lives of loved ones. And so for me, being able to frame this as this is something that's going to happen. It may not be what I expected. We didn't, you know, we didn't plan for a flood this, this particular weekend or whatever it is. Um, but they do happen. Uh, but then God's promise in this is, I will be with you. They shall not overwhelm you. You shall not be burned. The flame shall not consume you. And I think for me, uh, what I have often needed is that place to rest. That's a baseline that says, this is not going to be forever. And I will come through the other side. And it often doesn't feel that way in the midst of the most acute struggles. But coming back to this for me has been um, an anchor of hope. And the other thread that's really um, very clear in this passage is God's particular love for us and the many ways that that's articulated. It says, uh, I've created you, I've formed you, I've redeemed you, I've called you by name, you are mine. I am the Lord, your God. And then there's this beautiful passage where it says, I give Egypt as your ransom because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you. And I've spent a lot of time trying to receive these words from God. What does it mean that I am precious in God's sight, that I am honored in God's sight and that I love and that I am loved by God? And especially in uh, moments of struggle or moments of crisis, that that is still true. And I think this passage in the midst of the book of Isaiah, there's so much happening for the community of Israel. And this isn't spoken to them in the middle of a really easy, really happy time. It's spoken to them in the midst of distress, in the midst of this roller coaster that they're in the middle of. And so for me, that's been... Um, that's been an anchor to come back to, as I said. And uh, in the passage um, just before this, in the chapter before in Isaiah, there's this, this short phrase where it's talking about the Messiah bringing justice. And it says, a bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. And that gentleness has been so important to me that belief that God is not going to break that fragile plant. I don't know if you ever, if you are plant people, but I have many plants. And often once I see that something is bruised, I just break it off. And that's not how God operates. Uh, or a dimly burning wick, he will not quench. I don't know if you ever get to that bottom of a candle and it's just barely burning. And the same, again, I'm often like, I'm just going to throw it out and start the next candle. But that's not how God operates. And even just the tiniest flame, God nurtures. And uh, often I have felt like a bruised reed or a dimly burning wick. And God's promise is gentleness in the midst of that. So that for me is uh, 
a few of the passages that have really um, been sources of encouragement for me, and I think speak to um, perhaps words of comfort and love in the midst of uh, in the midst of difficulty. At the same time, another passage that I didn't have us read this morning, but I think I can reference because it will be very familiar to most of you, that's been really important to me, is the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel. And the reason that that one has been so important to me is because Jacob wrestling with the angel is something that Jacob had to do alone. In the story where Jacob is returning to to visit to see Esau for the first time years and years after stealing his birthright. Jacob sends gifts ahead. Jacob sends servants ahead. Jacob sends his family ahead. And then Jacob stays on the other side of the river and wrestles all night with an angel. And I think that that experience for me is somewhat analogous of walking through mental health struggles in that some things have to be done alone. And no matter how much we love a person who's experiencing mental health struggle or crisis, ultimately they have to wrestle with the angel. They have to wrestle with God. And we may be tempted to tell someone what their suffering means, to tell them that their experiences will be worth it or will be redeemed someday, to tell them that full healing is going to come. But that's not our place. And often that can come across as really harmful instead of encouraging, because it can be seen as imposing meaning. It can be seen that I, the outsider, am telling you what God is doing, but that might not be congruent with what I'm experiencing or what I'm wrestling with. So rather than imposing meaning, rather than having an approach that says, I can tell this person what God is doing. I think it's really important that we're invited to come alongside someone and to explore with them, where might God be in all of this? Or where are they finding meaning? Where are they finding hope? And when perhaps they're not finding any hope, maybe you're talking with someone who's saying, I don't have any hope. Rather than telling them, this is where you can find hope, I find it very helpful to say, I can hold hope for you. And that's very different, I think. And I don't know if you've ever had a, a Sunday where you've come to church and you felt perhaps, I know I have had Sundays like this, where I can't say the words or I can't sing the hymns, but being in a space where other people are saying the words or other people are singing the hymns helps me feel held, helps me feel that there is a community that I can be carried by when I can't carry myself. And we can do that for one another. We can say, I hear that you don't have hope. I know that you don't know what's going to happen. I have hope for you that this will not last forever. And I have hope for you that there will come a time where your life will be settled again. And in that is where I come back to this passage from Isaiah that's promises of God. Um, that God is with us, even when we're walking through fire, even in the midst of flood. And then the end of it, it says, uh, I will bring your offspring from the east, from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who's called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And this, this hope, this call for God to bring restoration is a call and a prayer that we can enter into with people, that we can pray with God and to God for this to be made true in people's lives. I have a lot of very practical pieces uh, around supporting people in mental health crises um, that I'm happy to share, but I don't want to, I don't want to just talk. And I know that at Fresh Start, that's not how the community functions is I don't just talk for 28 minutes. So I'm going to pause here. I'm going to pray. And then uh, I'm going to open it up for conversation. 
And I have a couple of particular questions I could pose. Alana, I don't know if um, if you have questions or how you want to shape that time. Um, but let's let's pause for a moment. Let's pray together and then let's have a conversation. Loving God, I thank you that you are with us. And I know how often in my own life I have prayed to be out of the floods. I have prayed for the flames to just go away. And I also know that you have been with me in the floods. You have been with me in the flames the way that you were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That when I have wrestled with you and that when we wrestle with you the way that Jacob did, we may walk away limping but we will walk away blessed and we will walk away with a name that speaks to our encounter with you in the midst of all of it. And God, I thank you for this community at Fresh Start. I thank you for the way that they are longing and, and looking to take your word and to take the tradition of the Christian faith and to bring it to real life struggles. I pray that your spirit would lead us and guide us in our conversation and that you would lead us and guide us in our lives with our loved ones, with our own struggles and with the people who we encounter wherever our lives take us. And I ask us all this in the name of Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for us, who is always in the work of redemption and restoration. Amen. Elena, I'll pass things to you. Thanks, Beth. That was that was really, really great. Um, I don't have any specific questions myself. Um, so if if folks in the top right corner of your screen, you can press the gallery mode button so that you can see everyone if that's helpful for you for a discussion. Um, and so Beth, I'm, I'm eager to hear some of the questions that you have to get us started. Um, I can also just offer silence and when someone feels that the spirit is moving them to speak, you can do so. I feel like we could spend so much time in this discussion. So maybe we just, uh, this is our invitation to have you back. <laughs> um, but I do need to move us along to um, our closing pieces of our worship this morning. Um, so thank you so, so much for your deep wisdom um, and, and for all of the learning that we're having here. And so I think... Um, our next hymn might help us uh, continue to integrate this. And so this is the, the hymn, I am a child of God. And so I'm going to share my screen here and invite you all to continue to let all of this great learning sink in.
education, I have a cry for peace. I have a cry for peace. I have a song of joy. I have a song of jubilation. I have a song of joy. I have a song. Friends, let us pray. God of love, we celebrate that today you are still speaking a word of acceptance, wholeness, and inclusion for all of your people. We give thanks for this church and the ways we seek to live out Jesus' commandment to love you and to love our neighbors as ourselves. On this day, we pray for people who live with untreated mental illness and who are unable to find help or cannot afford the needed care. We pray for an end to the stigma of mental illness. We pray for families torn apart by mental health and for families that hold on to one another during difficult times. We pray for those who have lost a loved one to suicide. We pray for mental health caregivers, for scientific researchers, and for professionals who seek to bring compassion, treatment, and healing to all those who suffer. We pray for children, teens, and young adults learning how to live with diagnoses. We pray for people burdened by labels and stereotypes. We pray for people who are victims of bullying and discrimination because of their disability. Help our society to be more compassionate of all. We give thanks for the many gifts that people bring into the world and celebrate the creative genius of artists, scientists, authors, scholars, business leaders, actors, musicians, inventors, and presidents who live with mental illness. We also take time to pray for everyone who is on our hearts today and all those on our community prayer list. God with us, as the mysteries of the human brain unfold, we remain in awe of the intricate ways in which we are created in your image. May we be reflections of your love in this world. Amen. I have a few announcements to share here about things going on in our community. And again, a reminder of all the different ways um, that you are invited to give your talents, times, and tithes are on that website. Um, our Christmas pageant, the live performances will be December 1st and 2nd. And we are all so excited for this to be back in person this year. This year's uh, family craft is a, uh, an ornament that invites us into the Christmas story through song and through carols and hymns. And so it's an at-home devotion for families to do together each week to sing a carol together at home and hear a piece of the story that at the end of our six weeks up through Epiphany, um, we can learn the story of Christmas at home. And so we'll make this craft together on the evening of the 24th. It's open to all ages. Um, so please bring children, grandchildren, uh, anyone who would like to, to do this together. And our live nativity will be after church on December 11th. So we are very much looking forward to that as well. Does anyone have any announcements they would like to share with the community? Okay. 
Well, our, our blessing this morning is responsive. So I invite you to do this blessing with me. You are each precious in God's sight. We go from this place, place claiming our identity as children of God. God has called you by name. We go into the world to answer God's calls. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, thank you for being with us this morning. Beth Ann, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I wish you blessings on your days. Thank you all. If folks want to stay and chat for a couple minutes, I'm happy to continue the conversation maybe after the recording's turned off, if anyone wants to keep talking for a few more minutes.